Hello, welcome to Preschool Storytime. I'm Miss Katya of your Coronado Public Library here at the Natural History Museum in Balboa Park. How are you all doing? Let's start with our hello song. Hello everybody and how do you do? How do you do? Yes, how do you do? Hello everybody and how do you do? How do you do today? First the boys. Hello to the boys and how do you do? How do you do? Yes, how do you do? Hello to the boys and how do you do? How do you do today? Now the girls. Hello to the girls and how do you do? How do you do? Yes, how do you do? Hello to the girls and how do you do? How do you do today? Back to everyone. Hello everybody and how do you do? How do you do? Yes, how do you do? Hello everybody and how do you do? How do you do today? How are you all doing? That's wonderful. So like I said, I'm at the San Diego Natural History Museum, a place I know that we all love. And the mission of this museum is to inspire learning of our natural environment. And that is what this story time is all about. But as you recall, it's also going to be about a letter. And the letter of the week is letter U. Very good. What sound does U make? Uh, uh, uh. Can you think of some words that start with U? Up. Uncle, what do you need when it rains? Umbrella, understand. There are so many great words that start with you. And of course, I'm here with Tipster the Turtle, who has a tip for families. The tip of the day is, ask Mr. Chris. Hi, Mr. Chris. Hey guys, I'm Chris. Today we are gonna talk about the Uinta Theater. Now, the Uinta Theater is a very large mammal that used to roam San Diego. And we look back into the fossil records to find evidence of certain animals that lived in San Diego at certain times in the past. And one of the animals that lived here in San Diego, because we have fossil evidence of them existing here, is the Uinta Theater. Now, a Uinta Theater is kind of like the modern day rhinoceros. Now, they're not exactly the same, but they are similar. And in the fossil record, we find bones that we can identify of um, where the Uinta Theater was. And typically they are from Utah, where the Uinta Mountains are near Salt Lake City. So that's very far away. So for us to find a fossil of this animal here in San Diego shows us that they had a large area where they lived. Because you know, humans like to live everywhere. And so these animals like to live everywhere as well. So what happened is we found a tooth. And this is a tooth of the Uinta Theater. And teeth are like fingerprints. So they help us identify what a fossil is if we have that tooth. So something that is a carnivore that likes to eat meat has sharp teeth. And something that likes to eat vegetables have flat teeth so they can grind their leaves or grass or whatever vegetable that they're eating. So the Uinta Theer um, has kind of a high, um, we're gonna look at it one more time, these high cusps, like little mountains teeth. And so that helps them grind up the food that they are eating. This specimen, all right, this is what a Uinta Theer looks like. It kind of looks like this guy behind me. They look similar, but they're ever so slightly different. And one of the big things, the differences between the two is the Uinta Theer has these very fun little horns on its head. So if you can think of what a giraffe looks like, how it has those little knobs, they're not necessarily pointed horns, but they're like little knobs on their head. The Uinta Theer had these knobs. They also have these very interesting sharp canine teeth, which is fascinating because they are vegetable eaters. So um, these teeth might've helped them chew big leaves that were kind of um, meatier than your normal leaf. Um, so behind me is the Bronotheer, which again is very similar, but not the same as a Uinta Theer. So the Bronotheer was here in San Diego in large numbers because we find a lot of fossils of them. Whereas the Uinta Theer, we've only found a few fossils. So maybe that means that there weren't that many of them here living here in San Diego. Do you know what kind of dinosaur this is? A lambiosaur. 
Anyway, we're going to be reading this book. It is called Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. And under is a word that starts with the letter U. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, mom says? Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we swim past tall rushes, whirlgig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three, they slip off and away, splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. It's a whole new world down there. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close, cutlery. Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, and strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond, we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for fresh water mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larva, watch what swims by they catch minnows in monster fast jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, the crayfish disappears in the dark. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, burp, right up onto shore as a far off loon calls good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond, the end. Do you like that story? And there's a lot happening under the pond in the living lab at the museum too. Can you see the sunburst diving beetles in this tank? They have three retinas, which means that they can see over and under the water at the same time. Did you know they can also breathe 
using their entire body. And now I'm in front of an Allosaurus skeleton. You're right, Allosaurus does not start with the letter U, but Utah Raptor does. These dinosaurs could grow to be 21 feet long. Let's, song, let's sing a song about Utah Raptors. Ready? A Utah Raptor stomping down the street, singing dino diddy diddy dum diddy do. He's looking for something good to eat, singing dino diddy diddy dum diddy do. He's big, he's strong, he's big, he's strong, won't be hungry very long. Can I hear your dino roars? Hey you guys, welcome to the Paleontology Fossil Preparation Lab. In my hand, I have the skull of a saber-toothed cat. And one of the defining characteristics of this specimen is its very long teeth. If you remember, the Uintathir had a very specific teeth for its diet, just like the saber-toothed cat. So it's got these very sharp fangs to eat its prey. Thanks, Mr. Chris. Who remembers what marmalade is? It's like jelly and this song helps us with opposites. Thank you so much to the Natural History Museum for having us. Ready guys? Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as slowly as you can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as fast as you can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as quietly as you can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as loud as you can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as nicely as you can. Goodbye, everyone.